Well, joining us via Skype is Eileen Markey, author of A Radical Faith, The Assassination of Sister Mara. Eileen, thanks so much for being with us today. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. I have to tell you, um, I remember I was, I was in master control or, or studio control right before the program uh, started today. I remember this vividly when this happened because of it was such big news. Um, your book shares the work of Marinol Sister Mara Clark, who along with three other women were brutally murdered in 1980. Uh, tell us a bit about Sister Mara's work because it was great. Yeah, so Maura Clark, Ida Ford, Dorothy Kazel, and Jean Donovan, they're referred to as the church women of El Salvador. Mm -hmm. They were um, four U.S. North American women who were doing work in El Salvador during the beginning of that civil war, which was a proxy war during the Cold War, um, a movement in the among the people and among the church in El Salvador was really demanding justice, demanding human dignity for the vast majority of Salvadoran people who lived in terrible poverty. And they were met with a really vicious repression uh, by the right-wing government, by the U.S.-supported government of that country. And so these four women were among the 75,000 people killed during that war. Um, they grabbed our attention because they were women religious, um, because they were North Americans. Um, so the work that Mora was doing was accompaniment, was solidarity work, rescuing people who were marked for death by this government, um, bringing food and clothing to people who couldn't get to their fields uh, because of this counterinsurgency. Um, and very much being being with people who were part of a big movement. I think sometimes when we talk about this case, we talk about it in isolation, but it was part of a social justice movement to build the kingdom of God that people deserved, uh, to build on their human dignity um, as, as as people in that society. And Mora and Ita were part of that work and, and understood their work in that way. Eileen, uh, you speak about this very violent time in South America. We saw the murders of Archbishop Oscar Romero, six Jesuits, and you mentioned 75,000 people. You know, what made you personally want to decide to tackle this topic? Yeah, um, I grew up in Springfield, Massachusetts, actually, um, taught by Sisters of St. Joseph. And we always knew about, we were always taught about the church women. This is something that was in our confirmation class, that was, a, you know, part of retreats and in the campus ministry office. Um, so I grew up in you know, knowing about the church in Latin America, uh, knowing about Archbishop Romero and the four church women as examples of committed Christianity. Um, and, and they inspired what I, what I understand about my faith and what I understand about bringing your faith into the real world. Um, I've become a reporter as an adult, and five years ago I realized I wanted to know more about that story, that I, I knew how it ended, I knew this witness and this sacrifice, um, but that I didn't actually know anything about the women when they were alive. Who were they before they became this symbol of sacrifice? Mm. Well, you share also that Mar, uh, Sister Mara's story and the Christian story she died for wasn't about penance and agony. It was, it was really about love. Tell us how you were able to see that after a brutal 12 years, and it was 12 very hard years of civil war in El Salvador. Yeah, yeah, that's from an essay I wrote for America Magazine about four years ago during, you know, I think it ran on Good Friday, right? You think of these kinds of stories as Good Friday stories. But I was saying, actually, the Good Friday story isn't about death, it's about love, right? It's not about violence, it's about love. Um, so that sort of, you know, it's an amazing thing, the incarnation, and it has incredible implications. If, if we are holy too, if our bodies matter, if the physical world matters because God came to join us, there's really significant implications in how we structure the world from that. Um, and so that love continues in El Salvador in the continued movement for justice there, right? El Salvador just banned uh, mining, choosing very directly that they value water more than gold, especially gold that goes somewhere else. Um, and so the, the movement that Mora was a part of, this deep belief that people matter and that love matters, continues in El Salvador in this in this struggle to build the sort of society that people deserve as children of God. Well, as you, as you said, 75,000 people have been killed. Um, and these four religious, when they were murdered and brutally murdered, it reverberated with everyone, not, first of all, from America, religious. What changes did that affect because of these four deaths? You know, I think it really... It's a word that make, is better in Spanish. It conscientizes a lot of Americans, a lot of people here, 
to be aware of the war going on down in Central America, in El Salvador, and also in Guatemala and in Nicaragua around the same time. Um, it made a lot of people in the U.S. sit up and be like, wait, what's going on down there? And which side are we on? Are we on the side that kills nuns? Oh, wait, maybe I need to think more critically about my country's role in foreign policy. So it was a very, for many people, it was a very clarifying sort of moment. Um, and it, it led, you know, many people into, into committed work for justice, seeing the example of these women and this, uh, this idea that you stand up for what you believe in and that you might make tremendous sacrifices for, for the belief that God moved in the world. Um, and so it, it, it stayed in the news for 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. Because women religious especially adopted this story um, and made sure that we all learned about it um, and that it made us think more critically about who we support in geopolitics. Well, this sounds like great Holy Week reading. Uh, Eileen, thank you so much for being, being with us. Where, where can people, what's the best place for people to go to find that book, and, and how can people keep up with your, uh, your life, your writing, your work, your events? Right, so it's on Amazon, there's a Kindle, there's an audio book on Audible. You can get it on IndieBound, which supports independent bookstores, or any, any of your local independent bookstores or Barnes & Noble. Um, there's a Facebook page under my name um, where I keep posting about events I'm doing and talks, and I've been visiting a lot of colleges and parishes and giving, giving talks and telling Maura's story. It's not a sad story. It's a beautiful story um, of a woman finding her way and finding her place and connecting with her brothers and sisters. Well, Eileen, it's a pleasure to have you on today, and, and thank you for joining us, and have a great day. Thank you so much. All right, thank God you. bless.